Well, that took like a minute. I was sitting here for what felt like 10 minutes waiting for this to connect. The last time I was streaming, I was on Facebook, so I had to change the key and everything. But hello, my inky friends. So funny, Ina and I were going through some of my videos. I wanted to, she did my hair today, right? So I was showing, I wanted to show her my space buns, you know, with the little hair sticking out. So I was going through all these videos and she's like, Cindy Lynn, always this why i'm like i don't know it's a thing it's a fun channel so you know what it's the party channel i see elizabeth and alicia is new i see alicia and i see elizabeth and alicia and elizabeth and alicia and elizabeth and alicia these two were just chatting up a storm Am I here for real? Yes, Elizabeth, you are. Who else have we got now? I'm going to scroll down past all the convo. I don't want to miss anybody's name. Jamie and Queenie. And thank you, Heather, for the mirror for Christmas, by the way. And Renee and Jane and Joe and Mary and Ruby and Dana and Chris in capital letters. Okay, I can only do so much of that before I feel like a weird person. Todd's like, doing the you know bubble gump shrimp boat thing for forest gump forest forest gump he's waving over there like forest sharita and gina and gloria glorious gloria and karen i hope i didn't miss anybody okay if you are just tuning into the replay you can skip forward a little bit, seven minutes because only the cool kids hang out for all the little seven minute chitter chatter we have heather with us tonight Hello everyone. I apologize up front if I start coughing and can't get my mute button quick enough. Her granddaughter made her sick and her grandfather. So they're all sick over at Heather's house. Nobody's sick over here, thank goodness. I mean, you know, physically anyway. In the mind, I can't attest to, you know, everybody's mental state. I'm referring to myself. Um, street jacket. Hello, Amy. Just Amy. Just Amy. I know you must have had your YouTube channel a very long time to just get Amy without it saying that username has been taken. Because it's all usernames, right? Like you have to pick your username, right? Like my inky fingers. And I can't have my inky fingers at the end of my YouTube thing because I have another channel called my inky fingers. Because I didn't understand what I was doing when I made these channels. And I have three channels and I, I started putting videos on the wrong one. <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, I got some fun, fun stuff for you guys tonight. Um, first of all, uh, I'm going to do a couple shameless plugs here. I should have moved that one down too. Cute card, right? How about this one? Cute cards, right? Ooh, look at these. This one, I got some flocking going on. And this one is all colored with copics and this you want to make these cards you can make these cards with us at the end of the month i have i think three kits left and i posted yesterday that i made some more kits um i think there's three left there might be four and i'm not cutting anymore so when they're done they're done i like i can't be sitting here cutting kits forever so um if you click any of the uh i should have put a link to the kit really i suppose if you just go, I mean, it's right here on the screen, right? Like right, right down here, myinkyfingers.com. Just click shop and it's right there. If it says back ordered, notify customer. If it says back ordered, don't buy it because I'm not making any more. So sorry, last week there was a shipping thing. Um, I'm not even sure what it was, but thank you to Karen for letting me know. And then we fixed it. I'm kind of scratching at something here. I got something pokey sticking out on my table there we go anyway so that there over 80 dies included in there it's some uh spellbinders two new die sets so we'll be making those two cards and wait till you see next month omg i would like to get two months in advance because i'd like to get like a design team that makes like cards with the kit ahead of time that would be nice right so um if you follow me on instagram you probably saw today that I was buried under a whole bunch of color because I'm making a new swatch chart. 
um, for, I almost said it, <laughs> I almost said, I'm keeping this, like mom is the word, I'm keeping it under wraps because I want to give that as a special reveal to my masterclass members this month. If you're an Inky Bestie, you're already an, a masterclass member. If you are a YouTube member, you are not a masterclass member. You have to be over on the website, okay? So I have some new, um, I mean, let me tell you this. If you got the masterclass just to come and see this new pencil crayon set and bought the pencil crayons, you would still be less than half the price of Prismacolors. And I'm so blown away by these pencil crayons. Um, Anyway, that is going to be at the end of the month, and that is also a link down there. And if you're not a bestie, I mean, I could start listing names here, but I won't. I mean, I can list names that I see that are, like Lee, Joe, Dana, uh, Mary, um, Heather, Chris, Ruby. Uh, Ruby's going to take a break. I mean, uh, you know, anyway, if you're not a member, right down there, free trial. You can join this month for free. And we're going to do stuff like teaching you how to do this. I'm going to just go over some of my Prisma coloring, okay? I want you guys to see um, how you can create the most amazing images with pencil crayons, okay? So this one I put some toothpicks in to kind of look like chopsticks. This is a um, Digis with Attitude digital stamp. I own those. I used to do digital stamps, but nevertheless, this is another one of my stamps. Oh, it's Easter too, right? <laughs> anyway... Um, animals with attitude. This guy was kind of grumpy, but these are all colored. There's Annabelle all colored with Prisma colors. Okay. So I'm going to teach you guys how to do this in the master class. Okay. Tabitha and Tony. And the nice thing with pencil crayons is, um, even if you have, it doesn't even matter which ones I got to figure out how to open this. Well, maybe I don't have to open it. Look at the detail in there, how small that is. This is Grumpy Gretchen. She was the very first Digis with Attitude stamp. I colored this back. Oh my gosh. I launched that line, I believe, in 2011. I, I've considered relaunching them, but nobody does digital stamps anymore, right? Pencil crayons, colored pencils, colored artist grade, okay? Your Prismacolors, your favorite Castells, your Beep ones that I just got that I'm going to show you guys in the master class. Everybody else that doesn't come to the master class, you will definitely learn what they are after the master class. But like I said, I'm saving that for the inky besties so that that reveal happens then. But tonight I was thinking, I was thinking, oh, it's fun reasons to make cards. Oh, that's kind of cool. Yay. I was thinking about, oh no, blah, 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 here. I was thinking about doing this. How about we get off of Zoom? And there's Chloe. I, I should show you guys the puppies, hey? Um, pending is, <laughs> I was thinking about coloring this. Um, and, I, and I gotta tell you, I bought this Gina K set. I linked it down below. I bought this Gina K set some time ago. Um, I, it's not quite six o'clock. I'll let you guys see the puppies. Hold on. Let's change the screen. <gasps> and while I'm doing the puppies, let me do this because I forgot. Oh, come on. Hold on one second. Why aren't you going? Oof. 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 Oh, there it goes. Okay, good. All right. So, our lovely Chloe. Gotta look over here, honey. Right here. Look. Right here. Right here. There you go. There you go. Look at mom. Uh -huh. and our lovely Sally and this one I gotta tell you she I, you could hold her here like this and give it like 30 seconds and she will literally fall asleep like that like she will fall asleep in the weirdest look at, look at the little positions. tail wag and you know what he did he's okay she just got groomed right and remember how she was all fuzzy he comes downstairs and he's got the two dogs like this okay he's got them like this and he comes up, he goes, kisses, kisses, mama. And I'm like really busy. I'm at my computer. I'm like, okay. And he goes, me too, mama. And I go, mmm. and then I look and he's got this one backwards. <laughs> you couldn't tell apart. Tell you couldn't apart. tell apart because she, her head, face was so fuzzy and so was her butt. So it was like, good Lord. Anyway, um, no, it's not bath time. I, it, there's no privacy. There's like, there's all these people here. We cannot have bath time in front of people. YouTube frowns upon people having bath time on YouTube videos. Okay, baby. We'll see you later. Her paws are wet. I wonder why. Is there like... 
They're doing much better with their potty training, by the way, but uh, maybe we'll grab a baby wipe. Anyway, okay, so. Your Sally's, the, the haircut is either starting to grow on me or mm. she's starting to look kind of like herself. One of the two. <laughs> well, it's she hair, it grows me. back, right? And we're definitely letting the hair come back on the head because it's just too short. The body, I like it more teddy bear cut because she's like, like, terrier hair but then it wants to be a terrier hair but then it's shishan like the bichon part of it and i don't like the way it looks so we'll see but anyway the dogwood and thank you to all of our inky besties thank you thank you thank you for supporting the channel uh, website i should say and getting all of those awesome videos and we have i have to mention too i have to tell you guys really quick you'll notice that a lot of the videos are towards the end of the month February was a weird month, okay, just with the way everything was and getting kits out and yada yada. So in March, we will spread them back out more, okay, with your stamp and chat. You get four videos and a real time where we all chat. You don't have to use your video, you can, and we all chit chat with one another. And that's where all the friendships are made. And that's where we really get to know each other. And um, Lee, I don't frown on bath time. You know what? Neither do I. And as a matter of fact, I laid in the bathtub this morning from 9 till 10.30, just in the bubble bath. I was just like, you know what? Mama needs a bubble bath. So I ended up getting this Gina K, um, or excuse me, excuse me, all to new. I'm sorry, all to new. I have Gina K on the brain right now. All to new paint a flower dogwood outline stamp set. Um, all to new is kind of interesting with the way that they, have you ever bought an all to new set? They do all this, like, you can color this one. It's already been stamped. You can um, cut that out and use it. There's a color guide. And then what's funny is theirs are pink. That's really funny. Anyway, I'll tell you why in a moment. Oh, look at this one. I had never seen that one before. Hello, my inky fingers. <gasps> All to new, a splash of color stamp set. You know what? I've never really gone through this thing. I've just kind of been like, oh yeah, that's nice. It's a whole bunch of wasted paper. But for me, you know what I mean? For a lot of other people, they might be like, they might really appreciate that. So, never lost. sorry, I wasn't trying to be, I wasn't trying to be a negative Nancy there. Anyhow, I got it and then I real, I bought it because it looked like a pretty flower, right? It looks like a pretty flower. So I just bought it and I didn't even know what it was called. Anyway, I got it. And then I'm like, dogwood. So I looked up dogwood and they were all white. And I'm like, what? That's so fun. So it has been sitting in my cupboard for a year. And then I got on the internet and I found this dogwood. Okay. Right. And it's pink and it's like not focused and it's on a computer. So it's going to look funny. But anyway, so I got that. And I figured, you know what? I started playing. This is my playing, right? Or whatever. And I thought, I'm going to color this tonight. So I want to, I just want to color and, you know, talk about my swatches or talk about whatever. I don't know. Let's just talk about things. So this is what we're going to create. Okay. I've already started it. I guess I don't really need to keep putting it up like that. You, I keep putting it up because the camera used to be up really high and I keep forgetting about it, but nevertheless. So that's what we're going to create. Okay. So, um, yeah, I'm going to use a combination of, um, Prismacolor pencils and Faber-Castell pencils. Um, I do want to mention that one of the things that I hear a lot of people um, saying or, you know, uh, telling people even is that Faber-Castells are better than the Polychromos are better than the um, Prismacolors. And I want to let you know that it's not really better. It's a different type of pencil crayon. Okay. And I call them pencil crayons. They're colored pencils. These are artist grade, you know, one soft core, one's a little harder because of the, the, the oil and whatnot. But I say pencil crayons, but they are, um, in fact, artist grade. Okay. So, and I'm going to talk about what I'm doing here too. After I talk about the pencil crayons a little bit, we're just going to talk, talk. So anyway, one is not necessarily better than the other because it's kind of like comparing, you know, a blood orange to an orange. 
Like they're both oranges. It's just one is a little different inside. You know what I mean? Because a blood orange is really red inside. Um, I don't even know if that's the right uh, kind of comparison, but I'm going to explain why they're different. Okay. The Prismacolors Premier, make sure they're the Premier, not like your regular student grade Prismacolors, but the Prismacolors are the ones that I actually started out with and I taught myself, I don't know how long ago, back in the early 2000s, how to color with Prismacolors. You know, um, there wasn't a lot of YouTube videos and things like that out there at that time. I will go through also, you guys, all the colors that I'm using um, and which pencil they are and why I'm using them. I will explain all of that to you as we go along. But I'm, I've got another flower to do, right? So anyway, um, Prismacolors are a very soft core pencil crayon. Okay, and I'm going to go into a lot more detail about this in the master class. There's a lot of history too about the Prismacolors and why they get so much flack and what's going on and why people complain about them and yada yada yada. But anyway, I'm not going to go into that today. So those are a wax based soft core and there's a lot of things that go into caring for them and using them, which I will again go into in the master class. But the Polychromos are they have wax in them but they are more oil based so the tips are harder or the tips the crayon okay and when i say the crayon i'm talking about the stuff inside of the actual wood okay so the crayon is a lot um it's a lot harder so actually i didn't finish that leaf but we'll do that after so a lot of people tend to prefer these because they don't understand why these Prismacolors keep breaking, right? So, I mean, the Prismacolor is very good in a lot of situations, so that's why I use them. Anyhow, I feel like I'm just rambling now. Are, are you learning anything? Oh, you guys are chatting there, okay. I'm like just looking to see what you guys are chatting about. I lost my train of thought, actually, to be perfectly honest with you. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like I just ramble on. Where was I going? What was I talking about? The, the difference. So polychromos. And you'll notice that in a reflection in the price, that the polychromos are a lot more expensive, right? And then you can get into like the Karen Dash Lumineers, which I almost got them for Christmas. Todd agreed that he would get them for me. And then I was like, you know what? I'm not going to use $500 pencil crayons on cards because I would love to, but I'm a card making channel and people that watch me are not going to spend $500 on pencil crayons. So then I'm just going to do videos and use pencil crayons that nobody can buy. And then they're like, well, this sucks. You know what I mean? Why can't you use Prismacolors or blank this other set that I'm going to tell you guys about at masterclass? Why can't you use those? And those are the ones I can afford, right? So anyway, I almost got them, but nevertheless, the Derwents, those are, you know, your high end, very expensive, um, pencil crayons. So those are a step up from the Faber Castells. Light fastness is an important thing. And light fastness is an important thing for artists because, you know, they could be making stuff, coloring stuff that might end up in a museum one day. You know what I mean? And light fastness is basically how long the color is going to stay like that on whatever you colored. And the uh, Karen Dash have like a, 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 the, a wide variety of the amount or many of the pencil crayons in the set are in the hundred year end of it, right? So I don't, I don't really care what my card looks like in a hundred years. Cause I'm sure the person I gave it to isn't even going to be alive. It'll probably have been recycled and it's now like an egg carton or something. You know what I mean? So, um, that would be one of the big things, you know, but when it comes to those pencils, it was more like I just wanted them. Like I have the Fabers and I can use those. There's no problem with those. So I thought I'm going to skip them. Oh, oh, poor Heather. Are you going to, are you going to make it? Uh, I'm going to be okay. Okay. All right. So anyway, back to these ones, polychromos and the prismas. Um, let's see a thumbs up for anybody who has prismas 
and a happy face for anybody who has Faber Castell, the polychromos, and a thumbs up and a happy face if you have both. And while you're there, if you don't have either, just give the video a thumbs up. And even if you have them, give the video a thumbs up. So just like give the videos all a thumbs up. And I am going to use Gamasol tonight. And I will explain why and when I want to use Gamasol. Um, right now, I'm just kind of laying down my color. And let's go into Zoom here. There we go. So you can kind of see a little better. Let's get a little bit more light shining on me. Okay. So I'm just kind of going in and what I'm doing is my um, classic flick. I am just a flicker. And if you really make me mad, I will flick something at you that, well, I won't flick, I'll flip. Yeah, it's a flip, not a flick. Okay. Anyway, so I just do this motion, okay? And I do that with my Copics. I do it a lot with my pencil crayons. I do it, I do it in a lot of situations because the thing about these pencil crayons is you, you, if you want this color, you don't do that. You do this many, 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 many times until you get to that, right? So you don't want to push really hard. And now I have to sharpen this again because I just ruined my tip. Um, I did today, if you had polychromos, um, look at all you guys that have both. Gina went, hi, Wendy. I haven't seen you in a long time. Karen, you guys have both. Um, the, the supply list for the class gem is in the video link. Um, I put it in there today for you guys. I put everything in there. Um, and you don't necessarily need to buy anything. It's just a suggested supply list. Okay. Things that you may want to consider now for my polychromos girls and boys and thems and theys and he's and hers. I listed these in my shop today, the Epsara, um, sharpener. This is like the least, this is the best three bucks you'll ever spend. <laughs> it is so inexpensive, but if you're in Canada, I can ship it letter mail too. And if you're not in Canada, make sure you get other things. Don't just get this cause it's not worth the shipping for you, which is shipping is still cheap, but it's not worth it just for this one thing, unless you really have to have it. But different pencil sharpeners are important for different pencil crayons. And I'm going to go into that in great detail and why in my masterclass. And then after the masterclass, it's like, you know, everybody will know. But obviously, I want you guys to, I want you guys to take the masterclass. And we're going to tell you everything tonight, right? But tonight is more of a um, fun reasons to make cards because it is national. Hold on a second. It is national. Oh, and there's the pencil crayons right here. And you notice in the video or the picture, did you notice in the picture I put on Instagram, I very carefully rolled every pencil crayon. <laughs> oh, I'm not, you can't see my pencil crayons. Here they are. I rolled each one. So the brand name, you couldn't see them. <laughs> I mean, if you dig deep enough, I'm sure you'll figure it out. But um, today is fun reasons to make cards. February the 9th plant a flower day plant a flower so i thought let's do a flower okay now again i'm just building that color and i'm using my base color is a prisma color because this is a soft core okay and i'm able when i color to get a softer kind of uh, application of my color and I don't have to worry about that long, long point. Like it's my base color. Okay. So it's less expensive for me to use these than try to, you know, get my nice soft, soft, um, powdery look, if you will, with one of the more expensive, more expensive crayons. And I love the way that these blend with the Gamasol and I am going to use my Gamasol tonight. And I'm going to tell you in what instances I use that. But for these little flicky lines, I can get a nice long, like you never want to sharpen a uh, Prismacolor to this point. And I'll go through that in the masterclass. You want them to be very short because they break. Okay, they're a soft core. 
but this one here I'm using the 129 and then a darker one again the 128 I'm gonna go through all of my colors right now okay so Prismacolor 1014 that's the deco pink and then 128 and 129 on the Faber Castells and then for the greens I'm gonna use the Prismacolor 989 and the Prismacolor 911 actually this is my second olive green because it's one of my favorite greens and then on the polychromos, I'm using 167 and 168. So that's it, just those colors tonight, okay? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, excuse me, the, the Prismacolor 1059 Cool Gray. Cool Gray 10%. So, because the gray allows me to come in and add that white where the flower would be white, you know what I mean? Because it's like that little bit of shadow. So with the Prismacolors, I love these for blending with Gamasol. And if you're new to blending or using pencil crayons, this is an excellent choice because the Prismacolors blend so beautifully. Let me actually give you an example here that I can show you on a darker color. So here, I'm going to do something I shouldn't, and I'm just going to draw hard a line okay I, I can supposed to build up to that but for time purposes I'm going to dip this in Gamasol and I dip it a lot okay because I want even though this looks wet Gamasol is a solvent and it's kind of like imagine it like alcohol you know how it just dries off so if this dries off even quicker okay so all you do is you come in and you can make sure I'm in the focus here kind of draw that color out and you get this nice powdery look right and the further you go without gamasol the lighter it's going to get okay and now i've pretty much exhausted that color so if i wanted it darker i could go in add a little bit more in here okay and then come in and get it a little darker again and i'm going to go through that when i do my leaves because i love using my gamasol for my leaves so I'm going to go through that at, in that instance but those are the colors I'm using and I'm just going with my pinks I'll just call it light medium and dark the light is the um, deco the prisma color and I'll do the same with the um, these ones okay when I say light it's the polychromos 168 and the well <sighs> I'm going to call the olive green, the 911 Prismacolor, the medium, even though it appears to be darker, you'll see why. And then the dark, I'm going to, the 167. Okay, I'm just going to say light, medium, dark, because I'm not going to look at every number every single time and drive you guys crazy. So anyhow, so I'm using the medium. And one of the things I noticed with this flower is it seems like the tips, which is really weird. It goes against everything, breaks all the rules. Every picture I looked at, the tips were darker that I don't know why because it's dog flower I guess I don't know why so the tips are darker than the inside of the flower so as you can see all around the inside here it's all gray right so it, my brain can't handle this <laughs> like this is not the way it's supposed to go so I have to color it differently than I'm used to right so um this one here, I'm going to come up a little higher, actually, off that gray. Kind of bring a little bit more. And the gray, it's easy to go over top of it, so I'm not worried. So again, I'm just going many, many, many of these flicks, and I'm just building my color rather than pushing hard. Um, and the reason you, do, you don't want to push hard is because you're going to... Um, your paper, if you can imagine for a second, your paper is all hills and valleys. Like if you go and you go like this on your paper, you can see there's white and pink. Okay, you see all of that? Because your paper, no matter what you use, it's got texture. So if you go really, really hard, then you're, then you're embossing, if you will, all of your texture. And that's not the way to properly apply color. So if you want to build, you just keep going softly and watch eventually this, I'll just do it on half. Okay, I'm just softly going back and forth, back and forth. And you'll notice the white just starts to disappear, okay? And that's how you apply your color. You don't want to, you know, depress 
and that gave me a really nice nice pointy point there so mary wants to know what paper you're using haha <laughs> well and jen wanted to know about buying a set and how to expand on it i, I know some art supply stores have open stock yes and that's the nice thing about the polychromos and the um, Prismacolors is Michaels has open stock on Prismacolors. Now, I don't believe they, I actually, I don't know. It's not that I don't believe. I know for certain that they do not carry every single one. Okay. Just like with the Copics, if you're trying to build your Copic set, you know that Michaels only carries a certain amount, but Hey, take advantage and when you see prisma colors like you know when they have all of their pencil crayons and markers that you know that aisle that the aisle we all love and drool in when they have the buy one get one free or buy two get one free that's when you go okay or you have a coupon and well yeah that's save that for your copics <laughs> you don't want to really use a coupon on a pencil crayons it's $2.99 but if you check out your local art store they will carry open stock on the polychromos. They have open stock on the Derwent, on the um, Karen Dash as well. And I highly recommend picking yourself up a Karen Dash white because it's beautiful, okay? And there's many instances where you're going to want to use a white pencil crayon. But nevertheless, so open stock is, is important, yes. Uh, because then you can just replace one pencil instead of, you know, a whole tin or having to use other colors because you're, you know, one color, your favorite one is gone. And now you are kind of, and, and the, the set that I'm going to tell you guys about is not sold open stock, but if you don't have any pencil crayons, it's going to be the best way for you to kind of get started and get into it, right? I kind of feel like these should have gone a little bit more. And then Mary was asking about the paper you're using. Yes. Now, the paper I'm using, I'm all I'm going to um, tell you guys after my master class what the paper is. Um, I've got to tell you something about this paper, though. This, I'm so happy. It is like, look at this, how close it is to the... Um, accent okay I've never found a paper that close at all and this is going to um, get cut obviously I'm gonna eclipse this I think just like this card that's what I'm thinking I was gonna do kind of eclipse it like that take the little you take a die and you just die cut over top of it a frame or a circle or whatever you want to do and then you just kind of add this is stamping up white remember whisper white Actually, look at these. They're so similar. But nevertheless, um, look at that compared to the accent. And now this. This is the whitest paper. And I'm so happy because this is the recommended paper for... Um, where am I? I'm over here. I feel like I need to soften this up a bit. So this is where I'm going to bring in my um, Gamasol, okay? And I'm just going to come in and I'm going to ever so gently go over top because I don't want to wash the lines out. I just kind of want to soften a little bit of it up here because I've got a little bit of harsh lines. So I'm going to, especially around the edges, just kind of come in. Actually, I'm going to go with the darker side. I'm going to start at the edge and I'm just going to fan it a little bit just to soften it up so that it's more solid blended out at the ends of the flower. And then it just kind of gets more grainy with the lines, if you will, as it goes down. So let's start with that. So this is another reason why you want to apply your color very softly, okay? Layer it, because if you ever hope to get any of this um, Gamasol moving stuff nicely without spreading a ton of color, <laughs> then make sure you're just like layering it, okay? And then I wanna do a little bit of blending here because I wanna blend my gray into my pink so that it looks like it's more shadowed rather than I just put pink and then I put gray, which is what I did, but I want it to look like it was intentional, not intentional, excuse me, 
where it's part of the flower, right? So there's that one. That was a little bit darker than this one too, but that's okay. Let's get a little bit of gray. Woo, hello. How'd that happen? So Mary, you will be in the class. And actually, if you're an Iki Bestie, all you have to do is go over to the link for the video and look down in the video and it'll tell you. You'll see it in there. Just don't come back here and type it. <laughs> I'll have to put you in Inky Bestie timeout. Or Heather will. <laughs> so if you're an Inky Bestie, you'll know. It's on the suggested supply list. So um, it's also something you can get at Michael's. And it's something that you should try to watch for a buy one, get one um, on that. Because that's a really good deal for that paper. Um, and it's it's an excellent artist paper for sure. I mean, even the the high end art stores carry it. So let's do let's do a. I'm not going to do this one. I'm going to do this leaf, and I'm going to explain to you what I'm thinking. So I I have all the lighter uh, portions of my leaves on the bottom, and the darker ones on the top. Um, I'm just going to pretend that the light. Actually, let's do it this way. So the light's on the top. Because the sun can you come down this zoom? way. Um, yeah, I can zoom for this one. Thank you, Heather. All right. I'm going to have some tea. And Joe is asking, what color of ink pad did you use to stamp the flower? Down in the description, I wrote it for you guys. It's Antique Linen. That's the no-line watercoloring ink that everybody uses. But it works beautifully here, as you can see. And I'm going to show you on, on what it, I'm going to do this leaf right here. I'm going to show you how to like make it so you barely like you can see a little bit of the ink here on the light side, but not too bad. Right. So I was mentioning, though, the um, sharpeners. OK, I'm going to go into great detail about sharpeners and da, 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 when I do the master class and I'll talk more about it after the master class. But this one here, um, I don't remember if I linked it or not. It's in my kit.co. It's a really good one for your Prismacolors. And this one is excellent. It's the it's very inexpensive for your polychromos. And there's the Cum one. It's um, KUM, automatic long point. This is more expensive though. Like this one's up in the over $20 range where this one's $3. And they're both just as good. The only thing is this one doesn't have a cover. So you just bring your little GB in. And whoopsie, wrong one. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Sharpen it over top of there, right? So I really enjoy that one. So for here, what I want to do is not use this one. I'm going to use my medium, okay? And I'm going to go on the top portion here. And I just want to lay down very softly my color on the top portion. But where the line is, I'm going to trace it, okay? So I'm going to trace that line. I'm going to trace this line. Because by doing that, it's going to give me a little bit more color to move around when I color these. So my light green is right here. And I'm going to go in. Am I in focus? I am. I'm going to go in. And I'm just going to, same flicking motion, okay? Like I'm not this way and that way. What, make sure all of your lines and color goes the same way. Don't like, you ever see somebody try to color a box? Okay, and they start this way, okay, and they're like, doo, 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 doo. and then they're like, doo, 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 doo. oh my god, don't do that, never do that, <laughs> never, okay, color all the same way, so in here, and I'm doing the same flicking motion, all right, just moving that color, spreading it out, softening it up, so it looks nice and pillowy, and that is a really good opportunity to use your gamosol. There's lots of other reasons too, because it's wax and the blooming and yada, yada, yada. Um, but again, this isn't the master class, so I, I will save all of that. But I'm going to go a little darker down in here. So I'm going to go over it again and apply some more color because I would imagine in here it's going to be a little darker, of course, because this flower is shading it, right? So a little darker there. And um, when it comes to stamps for the master class I haven't really um thought about that I guess I should think about that uh where's my medium here it is my olive green I'm going to put some of this olive green on top of that now and you see because 
I haven't um, squished all of my paper down, I can keep applying this color, right? I mean, it, there, there is an end to how much color you can apply, but I'm going to go in with my medium uh, stump now and just kind of move that up softly into the light colored one and then my light colored one, blend it back in this way. So now I've got this variation. I'm going to add a little bit more down in here. Now I cannot see my lines where the these little lines where the veins of the uh, leaf goes but that's okay I'm going to show you what to do to fix that in a moment now the darkest one I, I am going to press here I'm going to break the rules and I am going to press hard not like super hard where I'm getting fallout here but hard enough that I am depressing the paper there and I'm kind of creating that crater for that center vein, okay? And I'm gonna bring that center vein right up to the tip because the, the vein normally, you know, gets pretty close to the tip and in, in my world, it's gonna reach the tip. So what I'm gonna do now is make sure that I've got everything blended out the way I want it till I'm happy with it because, here's a little tip for you, Gamasol, see the center line here is also an eraser. Do you see how that line just disappeared? You can also, now it's not erasing in the sense that the color has disappeared. The color has just been spread out, okay? You've just moved it out. So that darkness is still there, but I can come back in and I can do this. So if you've done something that you're not happy with, that's a good opportunity to pull out your gamasol. So I'm going to lighten this area up by just coming in with Gamasol and I'm almost picking it up here, okay? And I'm going to darken this up a little bit more in here. See, something like this, if I really sat down, it, this could take me upwards of three hours to color, right? So, all right, now, because I can't see my lines, I'm going to bring out this guy. And this is why I didn't put the stamp back in it, okay? Because I want to be able to see these lines. And as you can see, if I put this here, I kind of like I eyeballed, but I think I'm pretty close there with my lines. So now on this one, I'm going to turn it is because this is the way I'm coloring. And I'm just going to kind of look here to see. Now, see here, this vein doesn't go all the way. I don't do that. You do it the way you want to. But I'm going to come in and I'm going to bring this one up here. I'm going to do another one right about there, and then let's do this one right there, okay? So there you go. Now you've got your little veins in there. Now on this side of the leaf, because um, this is the bottom, I'm going to come in and I'm going to go along my edge. And this here side, you won't end up seeing at all your ink when you're done. And this one, you'll notice that I'm constantly turning it because as I go, it gets really dull because it's a very, very soft core, right? So you'll notice I do this quite a bit because I'm turning it because I'm trying to, you know, when you have those mechanical pencils and you're like, oh, I want this, or you want the soft end, not the sharp end, and you're turning it, trying to find, I want the opposite, right? And I'm also going to come in now and just lightly apply some color. And here's the thing about color. Make sure you just do a little bit at first because if you've got too much, it's a pain in the butt trying to remove it. But if you don't have enough, you can always add more. Okay, so see up here where it's completely white? This here is going to stretch out all the way up there. See that? And I want to blend out this line too so it doesn't look like I drew a line on the outside of the leaf. But there, now I can come in and darken this whole side up because I don't want this lightness in here, right? So I get, I was able to gauge how much color I can, this little area can handle before I've got too much. Uh, yeah, that's the one. There it is. So Elizabeth there. is asking how much are the polychromos expensive? Um, well, you have to click the link below, Elizabeth, and there's, I think there's some options on there, um, different places. I think Blick I've got on there, um, you know, as, as a outside of those links, I mean, I've got Amazon and Blick and whatnot, but you could always check, you know, your local 
art store and whatnot. So they, they are the more expensive. Um, you can spend almost $600 if you buy them in a wooden case, right? So uh, normally you can get them in Canada. Um, and that's the thing, like everybody's in a different place of the world, right? So in Canada, if you get them on a good sale, a good deal, you can usually pick them up 120 for about $300. So they are, it, it, that is not for the faint of heart. I'm sorry if, if anybody's heart just stopped. Hopefully you have a pacemaker because <laughs> they are not cheap uh, by any stretch of the means. So now I'm going to do the same thing here and look for where my little lines are just so that, you know, they look proportioned because I do not draw. If you follow my channel, you know Cindy Lynn does not draw. So I'm not like, a, no, no, no. I'm going to sharpen this only because I want a nice, a nice pointy point here for this one because... I don't want it too thick. And the more you do this, see how the thicker the line gets? But if you do that and it's nice and pointy. You're out of view. Oh, excuse me. Sorry. If you do this over and over, it gets thicker. Whereas this, if it's pointy, you just have to do one line. I don't want really thick um, veins in there. The center one, you can get away with making a little thicker. Okay. But there is that leaf. Okay. So see how easy that goes? So let's do, I'm trying to figure out here. I guess this is a leaf in here and a leaf in there. We won't leaf you out, don't worry. But I do need a little bit of gray in this little area because I can see that that didn't get done. And then my gray one is my little itty bitty skinny one. Now, a little tip about your stumps. Try to get the stumps that are like on, they got a point on each end and they're solid. Um, I find they're better than the hollow ones just little tip for you okay so I'm gonna bring a little bit more lines down here I feel like yeah that's gonna help that a little bit here and because the, the Faber Castells are primarily oil based you can get those nice fine little lines where you try to do that with your Prismacolor and they're just going to they're just going to be not pointy and they're not going to be as skinny as that, right? So, okay, for the center, let's do the center and do something a little different. I'm going to use the 989 and I'm just going to very softly do an all over color. And I'm going in circles here, okay? I'm working in circles because these are circles. Okay, so there's an all over color. And then I'm going to go in with the medium and I'm going to do this. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with a marker so that you can see exactly what I'm doing. I'm doing this. Uh, yeah, you can see. I'm doing yeah. this, okay? I'm just doing little circles with little curly cues. That's what I'm creating. And I'm not, there's no rhyme or reason to them, okay? So with the medium, I'm going to come in and I'm going to follow, I can see these tiny little circles. I'm just going to follow those and just kind of like create more circles. Okay. Creating more circles. And if you find that you're not able to apply this color over your Prisma color, bringing your Gamasol, blend it out. You've got too much wax there. Okay. And there's just too much blooming. So you can get rid of that by picking it up with your gamosol okay and practice when you do your swatch charts all right when you make your swatch charts like I just went hard like you know like this and then I kept putting more here you know what I mean but you can take your um, pencil stumps and your gamosol and you can practice a little bit of blending right here kind of have it darker in one area and light in the other then add a little bit more color like use this as your practice as your beginning right so use those and the, the nice thing about these is you get these okay let's talk about Prismacolor real quick you get these there's more than this I don't know where they all are here's another one okay but I also included another one of these that has the color and it's computer generated color 
up here of what this color will be so at least you have an idea you know what i mean like if you don't have a full set or you started with the 48 and you're adding colors to it you know what i mean and i did the same with the polychromos okay and then you also get the swatch chart where they all get colored on one swatch and you get a colored version of that so you get four charts and you're also going to get that for the new beep set almost said it again and now i'm going to come in with the darkest green and I'm going to do those little circles again in here. Now, I put stickles on the list because if you're just like, oh, I don't want to. I, uh, I don't like that. Put some stickles in here. That would be so super cute. Okay, so there. That's all just little circles on the inside, okay? So I started with the light into the medium. I'm just going to put a few more dark ones here because... Because it's, it's my card and I can do what I want, right? Okay, let's do this leaf out here and I'm going to do light on the bottom. I don't know why I keep... I feel like this should be the top, but whatever. Maybe the light's coming from the bottom. I don't know. Nope, not this one. Where's my this one? So again, I'm going to start in the middle. Just create... I'm going to get an idea where I'm going to put that vein. And then very lightly coming in. Make sure that I draw, not too hard, but just draw along that outside line. So we have a couple questions coming in. Add at. Um, so Amy was saying, I'm struggling with getting my color to spread when I use Gamasol. Um, she's not sure if it's due to, does she have crap pencils? I asked what pencil she was using, but she hasn't replied yet. Um, and then Chris was asking, are the ones you're going to use and share in the class cheap in comparison? I said they're inexpensive, not necessarily cheap. Yeah, the ones that I'm going to reveal in the master class are so inexpensive that if you purchased an inky bestie membership for $15 I mean four videos for $15 you guys know you guys get it but those of you that don't $15 you're getting a master class and the master classes are anywhere from two to four hours plus depending on what they are but you can spend $15 on a master class and buy the pencil crayons for less than the price of 72 Prismacolors okay so it's definitely budget budget friendly now they're not open stock, you know, they, everything has a downside, you know what I mean? Just like Prismacolor. And this here, I was just doing that to get rid of some color. I don't want so much color up here in the tip. So if I get rid of my color, go in and come back, I can actually pick up some color and make it a little lighter because I wanted that a little lighter. Okay, you know what the difference is between a Hippo and a Zippo? One's a little lighter. <laughs> Okay, so um, pencil crayons, they're not blending with Gamasol. If they're not blending with Gamasol, then you need new pencil crayons because they're probably not Prismas or um, a good quality wax base core, okay? Or your oil, okay, you can blend Prismacolors with your Fabers. It's just not the favorable way to do it. The most favorable, fav favorable <laughs> way to use a Faber is to build the color okay so you know if you really really want like to watch some stuff on this kind of thing watch art channels not card making channels because card makers kind of learned as they go um and they're just telling you their way of doing things or how you know what they do or whatnot where an artist an art channel is basically that's what they do they are an artist that's all they do is color like sarah renee clark she goes around and people are like what do you do for a living she's like i color in coloring books and people watch me that's her job she colors in coloring books all day long and people watch her right so watch people that um are artists if you want to create art but did we get on uh, what pencil crayons they are um, I don't think I've had an answer. I'll, I'll go scroll down and check. But Lee had a question. Is there a legit 
Cindy Lynn method of testing out the various pencils we may have to compare our products. Wax versus oil, hard versus soft, well, etc. It's funny you say that because I have a little bonus for um, my masterclass members and this will be free for masterclass members. I'm going to give you the comparison chart because I started a comparison chart because I wanted to replace the colors in this new set in one of the color swatch charts I have now, like the Prisma colors, because it would make it easier for me than creating a whole new chart. So I had to compare and figure out which colors matched which, co which colors. And I thought, this is going to help me because when I do videos, I can say, okay, this is the Faber-Castell, but the comparable Prismacolor or blank, you can use this color. So I'm going to give you that chart. And in that chart, you will be able to color each of your pencil crayons next to one another, okay? Because the numbers are going to be written. It's going to tell you which number to color. And you're going to be able to see the real difference between each one. Like you're gonna see the difference from the wax base to the oil base, from the blooming to the non-blooming, from the building the color to blending with Gamasol, you know what I mean? So that's gonna be, I think you guys are really gonna appreciate that. I'm gonna go a little bit darker here, so I'm gonna bring in my darkest color. So Amy's written back and said they're a fan veen. Yeah, that's Amazon, right? Oh, okay. I, I Not think, a name I've ever heard of before. I think they're but. Amazon. And that's the thing, you know, like, I mean, unless you know, like, you just get on there and you're like, you know, I want pencil crayons, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, you get targeted with this comes up and you're like, oh, well, that's, I can afford that. And then you get them and you're like, why don't these work? And, you know, I'm going to take a, a, a line from Tim Holtz's playbook where if you use a different item, or medium you can expect different results right so unfortunately if you don't use something that you know you've seen or you know to be of good quality then you kind of got to expect that it might not work and and I get it like trying to save some money and buying these less expensive sets but unfortunately sometimes that's what happens yep they are I, I knew they were I knew they were Amazon because I know a lot of the names that are on Amazon. And I know that, like, uh, well, I'm not going to tell you. Because if I tell you which ones, like, uh, then you'll know it narrows it down, right? It's it's a surprise. It's an Easter egg that you gotta you got to come to the class for. So I don't even know if I'm going to get this done. I don't want to rush it, you know what I mean? Because it's so pretty. I do feel like I want to, now that I'm looking at this on camera, I feel like I want to transition this a little bit better and I'm going to do that by creating a few more of those flick lines in here just to create a little bit better of a transition soft little lines and sometimes too like I started out with the uh, Oahu uh -huh. markers. yeah they they were not great at all but it got me like you know what I'm kind of do like coloring and doing this and then it was okay I'll I'll go for the Copics right knowing how much better the Copics are but sometimes it's nice to get the cheaper one too just to see like hey is this something that I'm going to use that I yeah. want to play with? well yeah and you know a lot of people ask me you know Cindy Lynn what do you recommend if I can't afford Copics I recommend buying them slowly yeah like don't go buy another brand when your heart you know you want Copics okay so you know what and I go into detail about this and in, in the Copic masterclass where you take the rainbow and then you pick and I teach you how to pick you know what I mean the colors and then you slowly build your arsenal of like Angelina is so funny she came down to the studio here the other day I don't even really remember what it was she wanted and she says, Cindy Lynn, do you have, I wish I could remember what she wanted. Or no, she says, I need um, something. I said, oh, I have. She goes, of course. It's supermarket, she says. She says that about the pantry. She says it about this room. Da, 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 da. So 
she was coloring and I let her use my Tombos, which are not cheap either, but they're the less, I should have given her my Stampin' Up! markers. I have a whole two cases of those. I didn't even think of that. But anyway, um, she, I was telling her about these ones and I said, these are very expensive. She says, how, how much? And she converts everything to Corona because that's the, where her brain understands the value of the dollar. So I explained to her that they are um, between, you know, seven and ten dollars a piece, like nine dollars a piece. And I have, I said, there's 344 total, and I probably have 280 or 290. So she did the math, and she goes, Oh, Cine Lynn, look! And she's like. That's so much money. I'm like, well, I built it very slowly. I bought the um, chows, the set of chows first. And then I built from there. I went to Michael's and I used a coupon and I would go and I would take my girlfriend and we would both buy one marker with the coupon. And then we'd like go back in the store. <laughs> we'd both we'll pick another marker and then we go through the checkout I'm like is this okay she's like okay I go can I do it a couple more times she goes okay two more I'm like okay we would go like four times right and just go through the checkout four times make four separate purchases and you know I did that so many times and then now it's basically I, I I'm not about filling in my my um, collection right now I'm more about getting refills for my collection right now because I know that there's a lot of colors I use so much more than others and that's the thing with pencil crayons too is if you're just starting out there's absolutely nothing wrong with you know buying just a, a starter set of prismas you know like the 48 and then building it up to what the 72 would be I'm gonna be perfectly honest with you I have 120 of both prism colors and polychromos and the polychromos are more new to me than the prisma colors are but there are prisma colors i ain't never used and i will never use so having 120 is kind of overkill but you know if you're like me and you just like you know gotta have that thing because somebody else has it you know you have fomo like oh my god what if like christina werner uses like copic number e42 and i don't have it <laughs> you know what i mean i gotta have it Right? So if you're like me, like that, then you're going to get the 120 eventually, right? So start out with a smaller set and then build up from there. So here I'm just building up that medium color here in this little inside leaf, just slowly building it up so it gets darker. I am going to blend it out with my Gamasol, but I just want to get this built up because I know that this is a really dark little area in here. So I want to, I just need a little bit more of a point to get in there. I'm going to use the T-Gal for that because the, this is a different pencil sharpener, right? Because it's a different core. Core, that's the word I was looking for earlier. The color inside the pencil, the core. I got this uh, little rumor I heard about how to fix your pencil crayon if it's all broken, falling apart all the inside pris prisma color I got to actually test it out I should probably just go buy uh, one at Michael's and just throw it on the floor get it all broke up inside because I don't know which ones I have that might be like that right now so go get one and break it all up and see if I can get this new trick I heard about to work am I still in focus I am yeah yeah. Or take one of the colors that you never, ever use. This is true. But then I have FOMO. What if I need that color? What if somebody no, uses tomorrow. it? Well, and you know, I got to tell you, I've never had my colors like this. I've always had them on one sheet of paper. And having it like this, I can see me using more colors than I need. Like, there's some of these, like, you know, like look at this kaka poo poo, baby poo poo, PC93. <laughs> 13 but you never know I might need that in a certain instance you know what I mean but yeah any more questions rolling around there Heather? no not right no. now okay all right oh, and if I've missed anybody's question retype it I apologize yeah and if it's like Chris Hartley said one day I gotta tell you I'm sorry Chris to use you for this but I said to her one day why do you always 
yell when you're on my channel. Like you're always yelling. I didn't ask her that on my channel. I asked her that like in, in one of the events where I wasn't going to embarrass her. And she's like, oh, she goes, I'm so sorry. She goes, most creators, if you're asking a question, they want you to say it in capital letters because then they don't miss it. And I'm like, oh my God, that's brilliant. Okay, so if you have a question, just yell because then nobody will miss your question, right? So yell it. Get it out. Let Wendy us know. wants to know, do you still have a one-month trial Bestie membership? Have you? It's right there on the screen. There is right here a one-month free trial if you've never had a membership. If you've had a membership, um, it won't, you shouldn't get another membership for free or one month. But if you haven't, yes, you. it's always you can have a one-month membership. Um, if you had a membership and you somehow went and canceled it, there's quite a deep process to reactivate it that I'm not even quite sure how it works yet. So, yeah, um, if, if you want to reactivate and you're having problems, reach out to me. I will try to work with you and the developer of the program I use for subscriptions because without a subscription, you can't have a membership. And it's just like my brain just blows up every time I even try to understand it all i don't get it all okay so here again i mean look at that see how different this okay this is no this is with ink and that's without ink okay so ink wait let's line it up really good there you go let me bring it in better there you go there is with ink no ink ink no ink you decide i personally think it in this situation, it looks better with, oh, let's do it this way, with no ink. I just want to see which one. Okay, so this one's this one. So I'm going to do, uh, did that one. So I'm going to do a little baby one here. I'm going to improvise because these are not quite, I got to sharpen too because this is really dark. These ones are not quite, there we go. A little one right here. Let's make this one a little bigger. All right, that's good. Perfect. I'm loving it. What time are we at? Let's do, let's do um, another, we'll work on this flower here for a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to do my gray for, oh, we'll miss some gray there. I can go back after and blend all this in, but okay. So I'm going to start here. Maybe I say move it over a little bit, can you? Right there, there better. Yep. And it's probably going to be pretty hard to see the gray go on, but I'm doing it ever so lightly. And if you want it darker, build. Okay, don't just smash your color on there. And then it's white coming out from the seeds or the whatever you call those little thingies. And let's do a little bit of gray over here. A little bit of gray there. I'm going to go around and just do all my gray. So, yeah, I'm all, I'm all prism colored out. <laughs> that one, I shouldn't have put so much there, but that's okay. I can go over that. And this one, poor little petals all squished in here. Just squished right in there. A little bit here. And again, this is a prism color. So it's very easy for me to blend this out, make it look a lot softer, which I can do right now, make it look a lot softer. And um, you'll notice too, the more you dip your gamosol, the easier it is to spread. I, I've actually, um, somebody mentioned to me, uh, a creator on their channel said, oh, you just dip it once and you're good for the whole time. And that is, could not be farther from the truth. The more you dip it, the easy, and you're going to know, you're going to know as soon as you get these and you're playing around, you're going to know the more you dip it, the easier this is to move around. Um, if it's dry, it just doesn't move everything as nicely. And if you get that blooming and that's the, the, the haze, and I'm going to show you guys all that in the masterclass. Um, it's easy to get rid of it with these. Like you can just go over your swatches just to get rid of all your blooming so simply. So there, I've got all my gray laid down. And now I want to come in with my 
light pink because that's also a um, prisma color. And I want to find that side that's nice and soft, that side right there. And that's the side I want to be working from. And you can see now why in this instance it's nice to have that prisma color, right? Because you've got that nice soft side where a line is not as easy to blend out softly as it is to blend out that nice, I lost my side, there it is, that nice softness, right, of this here pink. So just going to add this in to give me an idea where I'm going to be laying down all of my lines. And again, I'm working in lines like this, okay, but I'm just doing it on a smaller scale. And moving your paper to where you, you're, you're um, comfortable, okay? You notice I do this a lot. And I know for you watching, it's probably like, oh my God, can she just keep her paper still? You've got to move your paper to where you're comfortable because if you're not comfortable, your strokes are, are, are going to reflect that, right? So make sure that you've got your That's paper. That's the same with Copics. Exactly, 100%. To keep your direction going the 100%. right scroll. Well, and it goes back to what I said earlier about making sure that you're always going this way and not this way and then that way. Like that just that that just looks like a you know a four year old colored your image, right? You don't want that. You we not four years old no more, honey. We all grown up now. We got a color like grown up coloring. Okay, I so I used to do that at four years old. Never mind now. <laughs> <laughs> she was born a perfectionist. All right, so now so Chris. Mm -hmm. was asking, do those pencils bleed with water? I wouldn't say they would. Um, another nice thing. You can do that with your undo. And they don't, they don't get like all, that went a little bit. You know what I mean? You're okay if you use a little bit of your, this here, I should rub, rub, rub really hard on it, but your this will not make it bleed. So if you have to move, you know what I mean? You'll be totally okay. Now I'm going to erase that. I shouldn't have pushed so dang hard. <laughs> Cause I did get a little a bit there. I'm trying to make a point. Yes. Anyhow. Oh, and be very careful, too, of doing a lot of this because there is color sitting on top of your paper because it goes back to this here, okay? So if you do this enough, you're going to see that, I don't know if you're going to be able to see here, but you can see that it started to, <laughs> to spread. Oh, it's kind of hard to see on the video. You, you will, um, and this is something that people that cut color coloring pages problem they run into because they want to color up here with their pink and then over here and you know kind of save time and do everything with one color all those areas but this here the palm oh how about we just do this for a second the palm of your hand here every time it's rubbing you're going to move color around and stuff like that okay so um if you've done a lot of uh blending and whatnot you'll probably be okay but if you haven't just put something down and underneath your palm so that you can color, but you're not really going to run into that in card making because we don't color the biggest, you know, biggest massive little images, right? These aren't coloring pages. And I'm going to tell you, I was on Amazon and I saw a gnome coloring book because I was buying the item that I'm going to show you guys in the master class. But I was buying that and I saw, you know, they were suggested items come up and I almost bought a gnome coloring book. And then I was like, when am I going to color it? <laughs> I can't put it on a card, you know, and you guys probably don't care about coloring, coloring books. So, you know, nevertheless, um, I think I'm going to have to finish this later, another time. This actually, you know what I'll do? I'm going to finish this in our Stampin' Chat. That's what I'm going to do because Stampin' Chat is for besties and it's pencil crayons. And I'm going to go over, um, I will do the eclipsing on it, okay? So if you want to see how to finish your card off like that, then definitely...
come to the stamp and chat or watch the replay and actually you know what i kind of like how i went really dark around the outlines here you know what i mean like it wouldn't normally be light or dark there but it kind of looks really pretty how i did that i don't know why i did that and i don't know that i want to do that on these but let me have a look it's almost like bringing the black ink in but more subtle yeah and it's like it actually kind of looks, I don't know, that kind of looks pretty, right? I don't know, will she do it or won't she? I guess we'll have to see in the Stampin' Chat. So that, uh, I don't remember the date of the Stampin' Chat, but it's listed on the classes page of MyInkyFingers.com right there. So if you go to MyInkyFingers.com and you go to classes and events, they're all listed there and they all come with a replay except the real time. I do not record that because that's you guys. You know what I mean? And I'm not, I know I love gnomes too. <gasps> bye Mary. Bye Mary. Bye Mary. So, um, I'm a grown up. Sorry, Rosie. No, I take it back. I take it back. We're not all grown up. It's like, I was laughing about Angelina and her. Oh, did I tell you guys that, that, that uh, her mom did my hair today? Did you see the braids? Angelina went to school like this today. And I was like, Oh, will you do for me? She's like, yes. And, and, and oh my God, she's like, well, your head like, I'm like, oh my neck. <laughs> like, like, Don't do this. Take your glasses off. You can't play on your phone. I was like, oh my God, I feel like my mom's doing my hair. <laughs> Anyway, um, oh, where was I going with this now? I was going to tell you guys something. Ugh, Angelina, age, growing up. Oh, yes, okay. So Angelina with her whole little supermarket thing down here. Um, Kimberly posted a, we have a group chat. Kimberly, Cheryl Lee, Heather, and I, um, four musketeers, because there can be four. But anyway, I don't know what there are four of. It just came to mind. So she posted a picture of a cup and it said, if you walk a mile in my shoes, you'll end up at the craft store. And I'm like, you're coming over. <laughs> She's like, no, that's a superstore. And I'm like, you know, it is. So I tell you though, I, 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 I can appreciate why Christina Werner did a, a time capsule. Um, I used to watch her channel back then. I don't watch anybody's card making channel. So it's nothing against Christina. I just watch art channels more than I watch card making channels anyway and discovery network because anything 90 days is precedent over anything on YouTube. So I can, I can see why she did it though, because sometimes like I look around and I'm like, I just have too much stuff sometimes, you know, like I just finished my collection of the spellbinders foils. I just got a new order and, um, Oh, I have to tell you guys something before I go really quick. I'm going to find these for you guys cheaper. Sorry, Waffle Flower. Sorry, they're all the stores that carry these. But I have a source that's going to source this for me. So I bought them so that I could send one to my source. And I'm going to find these cheaper. Because I'm sorry, okay? I'm sorry. I have to say this. I, I mean no disrespect. But $9 US for, for, for like five? Five five for the shaker fronts you know what i mean and then you fold all this over your card front and i love the concept but seriously they're more than a dollar a piece okay and you know what that's the only company that carries them so guess what we gotta change that <laughs> make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any of that and i mean and you know make sure you're subscribed because what if you don't see me again that would be a real sad thing what if i never get to see you again that would be subscribe terrible. Subscribe on the website, not YouTube. No, you can subscribe to my channel here. Subscribe yes, to YouTube. But, but the membership is on myinkyfingers.com. And it says that when you sign up for a membership on here, it says, if you sign up here, you are just supporting me as a content creator. Your videos are on the website. That's where you got to sign up. So thank you, Dina. I will finish it in the Stampin' Chat for sure. Because I, I'm really liking it. It's such a pretty card. I really do. I really do like it. So I will finish it in the Stampin' Chat. Um, can't remember what day it is, but Waffle Flower stuff is uh, is all pretty and pricey, Ruth. It's pretty and pricey because <laughs> all their stuff is so cool. I mean, I have the Waffle Flower mat 
50 bucks. I didn't know there were knockoff ones. And I have the knockoff one linked in my kit.co, which is at the very bottom down there. Just go to, um, I think, Painting and Distress or Tools. It's in one of the two. Or you can go to my website, too. And if you go to my website and open Tools and Supplies, it'll take you to whichever category and send you off to uh, kit.co. Unless it's a Mikey Fingers tool, like something like this guy, you know. Or this guy, or, you know, other things, selfless, shameless plug here for the pick and poke. And I have the new tips on there, cheaper than um, my competitors, because, you know, that's a thing. Anyway, all right, you guys, Stampa Chat 24, thank you, Heather. Um, <laughs> You can make those, Cindy Lynn, plastic and bone folder. Yeah, yeah, but you know what? It's just easier to be able to just, I'm, I'm going to source them. And you know what? You're going to want them. But until then, you guys, would you like to say goodnight, Heather? Good night, everybody. Good night, my inky friends. And I will see many of you in our inky bestie videos. And if not, I will see you guys next Thursday. So until then, 